Alrighty, as promised in the general chat, we're going to be talking about why marketing isn't as terrifying as it feels like. I mean, you don't have to behave, just, you know, don't be too unruly. By which I mean, you know... Honestly, I got nothing. Uh, we never behave. That's kind of part of the charm of it. We never behave. Alright, so we're talking about marketing this week. It has been a thing that we deal with a lot. Marketing is scary for a lot of folks, for a lot of writers, because part of it is we're awful at it. Uh, we're terrified of what it means because most of us are introverts and we don't want anybody to notice us, for one. Uh, we would much rather hide in our corner and not uh, not let anybody know we exist because that's much more comfortable. But marketing, if you want to actually get your book out there and accomplish the whole making a living as an author thing, you've got to do it. And Heather knows. She's done more of it than I have. It's, it's horrible and un uncomfortable a lot of the time, but it doesn't have to be super scary. Uh, I have some resources for you folks that will make it a little easier. And I have some suggestions. So, the thing that I would like to start with is obviously covering social media. Now, social media is complicated and it can be disastrous if it is done wrong, if it is not used properly. Uh, so that is a thing to be aware of. Because as we know, uh, mentioning J.K. Rowling, as much as she who shall not be named should be mentioned, she got herself into a hole because of the way she behaved on social media. If she had not done that kind of thing on social media, she would not have fallen from grace, so far as everybody knows. Now, that isn't to say that having problematic opinions won't get you backlash and that jerks should not be dealt with, but there you go. Um, lead, that is a complicated question. It's one that we can get into, but it would kind of derail what I'm doing. Uh, so we'll talk about that, but I don't want to start there. So one thing that you need to do, I'm actually going to do a screen share here for you folks so you can see um, this document that I have. I've uploaded it in our resources channel. And let's, let me switch over to that. All right, so if you take a look at the cha the uh, image I have on screen, this is the marketing checklist that I have created for Insomnia's authors. It's broken down into three categories. We've got things that have to be done, but can probably be done once per book. We have stuff that has to be done every week. And we have a cat in the way, that's what we have. We have three, and I have a list of things that you can choose to do three or four of every week. And it's a pretty big list, so it, it'll keep you busy. So, looking at this list, the first things you need to do here, for the most part, can be done before your book launches. And a lot of this stuff doesn't require you to have a book out in order to start doing it. Which is one of the benefits of the things that I'm suggesting here. So, you can create your author blog and or website before you have a book out. Uh, my, I have one. It's 13 cents short. You folks have all seen it and heard it. Um, and if you haven't, go check it out. I post there every week. I do writing tips, kind of like what I do here. I do a once weekly, I do information about my setting in my book. Sometimes I do flash fiction or just talk about my journey as an author. But that's the kind of stuff that I put up on there. Your blog may look different. For Heather, she might choose to do a blog about rock climbing and her dog and other such things. Um, for uh, for you, Lead, uh, you could easily put a bunch of your lore in the blog as blog posts. And you could talk about whatever subjects you want. It doesn't have to just be the things you write about. It doesn't have to just be your book. Because marketing, in a general rule, in most of these circumstances, there's an 80-20 rule. Where 80% of what you show and what you share should be stuff that benefits your reader. And 20% should be buy my stuff. And if you have nothing to tell them to buy yet, it could be 
the, the cell could be sign up for my newsletter, which is a hill I'm just now starting to climb. Or it could be like, in, like my blog or share this post. But 20% of the time, it should, you know, 20% of the content should be the call to action slash do the thing. Now, yeah, you could absolutely write a blog about biology. Whatever you want to write about. Um, we talked about branding once before. Choose what of yourself you want to show to the public. And that is part of what you will be blogging about and writing about. That is the uh, the thing. Nidnid, if you go into the resources channel, I have the checklist there that you can download. Even if you can't see the stream, I'm just showing the checklist right now. So you can download that and take a look at it yourself. Uh, but to get into this checklist, um, so you'll want to start with uh, getting your author blog created. Set up your author social media pages. Now, the way authors can interact with social media, first off, this is something I'm just scratching the surface of myself, is you're going to want to think about who your ideal reader is and identify that person. I mean down to the age and whether or not they have kids, stuff like that. So think about the demographics of the people that you want to read your book. And this is something that I've gotten from a podcast I've been listening to. I shared that um, in the resources channel also. It's called Book Marketing Simplified. It's a really great podcast where they take a lot of marketing stuff and simplify it. And they talk a lot about your ideal reader and uh, how to market to them. And what they say, and I am in agreement with this, is if you find your ideal reader and kind of create them almost as a character in your head, that's who you're talking to on social media, unless you're talking directly to an individual person. You are going to be talking directly to that one individual who is the person you want to read your book. Now, don't give them a name or anything, but it will be like... For example, I'm looking specifically for Jim Butcher fans. So to me, my ideal reader is somebody who is into like comic cons, maybe does historical reenactment like I do, um, is not averse to religious content because I'm Christian. My books are obviously influenced by that, but it's not, they're not Christian books, but somebody who's not an angrily atheist individual. You can be atheist and still enjoy my story. I know several atheists who have, but somebody who's not, you know, militantly against religion. And probably not somebody with kids, because my novel isn't really for kids. And there you go, Ellie, that's perfect. Uh, so something like you want to create that specific reader in your mind, like picture them. And when you're doing your social media posts and your marketing, that's the person you're writing to. And something that the uh, the podcast that I mentioned goes over that I think is really valuable too is just because you're writing to that one individual does not mean that it won't be interesting to a wide array of people. That is absolutely the case. So for me in my genre, I know that from what the demographics show, most readers of urban fantasy without any kind of romance are men. Most of the Dresden Files readers are 30s to 40s male uh and you know they're giant nerds in various different flavors that's a really that that's kind of the demographic so i've created a persona and i'm working on crafting my marketing toward that person when it comes to marketing my book now when it comes to my blog i am marketing for writers my blog is obviously geared toward writers because i'm constantly giving writing advice it is specifically geared toward writers who may not have published a book yet. And writers who don't know the publishing industry very well. It might be geared more toward women than men, but I hesitate to say that because being non-binary, I get confused by that anyway. So, eh. But my, my, mar my blog marketing is targeted toward that demographic very heavily. And so I lean into that. And that's what all my blog marketing... You know, when I talk about my blog on Twitter and so on, that's what I do. So, it's, and I know this seems like a side thing, but talking about your social media pages, your demographic is going to be more or less active on a specific platform. Facebook, for example, is mostly older folks. It's people, you know, 
30 and up. The young kids don't really hang out on Facebook. It's for fuddy-duddies. Um, 60% of users of Instagram are women. So if you're trying to market to women, Instagram's probably going to be the place. If you're looking to market to young teens, TikTok. As much as it scares you, TikTok. So think about that when you're choosing which social media platform to be the most active on. Now, I have a social media presence on all of the various different platforms. I've got Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok in addition to my blog. But the one that I really hang out on the most and do most of my chit-chatting on that isn't just personal is Twitter. And yeah, Lead, you could definitely make yourself a presence on FA and E621, but I also know that Twitter has a lot of furries on it. Twitter has a big furry community, so you could try that too. So there you go with the... Um, and I, I don't know if dabbing is still hip. I'm too old to follow the trends. I could ask, probably, but they'd laugh at me. Uh, that said, you've got... So think about which social media platform you really want to hit for your target readers. Uh, Heather, for example, I know she uses Instagram really heavily, and she's also marketing mostly to women. So it makes sense that that's where she'd go. Build an author mailing list and consider your incentives. This is the one that I'm struggling with. I don't really have a mailing list yet, and I'm working on that, but creating a mailing list by all marketing accounts is really important. That's because social media accounts come and go. They can get hacked. Things can happen. They could get deleted. You could get muted for whatever reason. Things can just happen. But your mailing list, if you have all of those emails, you can reach out to all of those people and let them know. And... Beyond that, you can also consider incentives. Like, if you sign up for my mailing list, you get this free thing. Whether it's custom art of the characters that I created, or whether it's... If you sign up for my mailing list, you get the first four chapters of the book free. Or if I want people to sign up to my writing mailing list, I'm actually going to be giving this away as one of the incentives. I'm also going to be giving away my... Uh, 200 urban fantasy reviewers uh, file, so that's that's pretty big. But I'm going to be doing stuff like that for the writing end of things. So think about those incentives uh, and what you can give away to people to get them to sign up to your mailing list. In your mailing list, you should do a newsletter on a regular basis, whether it's once a month or once a quarter, once a week, you choose your frequency, but you really need to get that set up. And again, you don't need a book to do these things. Assembling a street team to help you market your book. Now this one, I have a street team right now. Heather's part of it. Uh, and this street team right now is not really doing a ton because my book marketing isn't kicking into high gear until November. But I, it's best, collecting a street team is best when you get closer to launch and you actually have a book. The street team is going to be people who are really excited about your work and are willing to like and share your social media posts and are willing to engage with you. They might pre-order the book to help you get, you know, get out there sooner. They might be willing to write reviews. Um, what I'm going to be doing is if anybody on my street team shows me a screenshot of their receipt having pre-ordered the book, I'm going to send them the book early. And if it doesn't matter if they order the print or the ebook copy, I can only send out an ebook early, but I'm going to be sending them the ebook a month or two in advance of anybody else. I'm also going to be doing a raffle for a custom bath bomb and a giveaway for a chainmail dice bag made by my husband. So that's some stuff. Like my street team is people who are really excited and they get to see my cover before anybody else does, for example. That's one of the things they're getting. So they get some value added stuff and they get to help me market the book and it's it's a they it's it's just a big thing of excitement. They get to share my giddy squee over things. Um right here, fill out and claim your author page on Goodreads and claim all your books. If you have any books out, this is really important. You can also contact Goodreads and they will attach books to your profile if you are attached to them. I recently had to contact them and say, "Hey, 
I actually am attached to these books and you've attributed it to a previous name that I had and when I got married I changed my name and we did you know I'm, I'm working with them on that and they're really nice and it's a collection of volunteers and they're really excited to work with you so even if you don't have a book on book out yet though go to Goodreads create your author page start filling out information you can also start talking on there it's a social media site it's valuable and it's full of people who want to read so that is a really important place um also create and claim your amazon author page and fill out the information on it this is also really important all you have to do is log in to facebook or not Facebook, all you need to do is log in to uh, the Amazon author dashboard to claim your page and fill out your information. That can include your social media links and putting that together, it's kind of like a hub on Amazon for your book and all of your books, whatever you put out, uh, it's, it's, it's important to fill out. And if you don't have it filled out, you are missing out on opportunity to, for readers to find you and connect with you because that's one of the things that is really important is your readers want to connect with you. And if they can't connect with you, they're going to be sad and it may lose you out sales because what really what we're doing as authors with this marketing is you're connecting with people. So these things that need to be done but can mostly be done once except for occasionally adding your books on Goodreads or updating your blog and website. Uh, so this is stuff that mostly you can do once and don't need to do it again. So once you finish this, it's it's a pretty small list. It's one, two, three, four, it's six things. Once you've done this, you're done. Things that you need to do every week. Again, this isn't very big. Schedule your social media posts, either on social media individually or using a scheduler like Hootsuite, um, which I will show if you guys haven't seen it yet. Um, make at least two. Well, I mean, connecting with people can be networking. It doesn't need to be... Like, this person's now my BFF. It doesn't need to be... You could... For me, connecting with somebody might be something as simple as scrolling through Instagram and being like, Hey, I really like your dress. Nice job. And keep going. You don't need to have really deep, intimate, personal connections with people. But it is... Uh, it is kind of important. And... So that is a, that is a thing that you will want to develop a skill and it doesn't mean you need to be really intimate with people but okay well that might be something to to think about um i'm not sure how to help with that that might be a that would require a whole lot more conversation it would kind of derail things i i appreciate that you're saying you can't connect with folks and i i see that nid nid and if you're, yeah, exactly, you're connecting with us just fine, you're a member of this community, we get along well, you make jokes, you, you're you part of this community. So you aren't entirely disconnected. Um, and when you release a book, I promise you, I will be buying it. So you're connected, you're part of this. Um, but the, the thing, returning back to the document here, uh, you're going to want to make at least two social media posts on your author media page once a week. You can schedule those in advance with Hootsuite, that's okay. And spend some time thinking about your blog posts every week. You might, you don't have to write them, but you definitely should think about them a little bit. And then there's a big list here of things that you should do every, you know, choose three of these to do every week. Now, I write two blog posts every week myself, but you can do a little bit of this over time, you could make a podcast episode, make a TikTok video, and it doesn't need to be specifically author-centric on TikTok. If you have an author account and you do some kind of weird duet challenge on there, that's okay. You just need to keep active on these things. Um, consider writing an article for for Medium. Uh, you know, there are a whole bunch of different options here. The things you can do, and this is not an all-inclusive list. This is just a list of possible things, like doing raffles and giveaways, f joining a couple extra social media groups and sniffing out some places, maybe reach out to somebody and offer to do a blog swap. So there's a whole bunch of options here. And what I like to do is I like to roll the die and let fate choose for me what I'm doing. So that is definitely an option, but you can do all sorts of this stuff. Uh, 
And this is all available. At the bottom here, I have some resources for folks. Um, there's some playlists. There's my author playlist where you can watch some of the videos on marketing in there. There's a whole bunch of good blogs um, and some other posts that I've found that were nice that I thought would be useful. So that's that's what's in this document and it's available in our resources thing. Um, and I made it for my uh, I made it for my blog and also for Insomnia's clients. Uh, secondly, something that you can do. This takes time, but doesn't need to be terrifying. It just kind of long is going to be something like this. Up on the screen, you will see an Excel spreadsheet now. And off to the left, you can see I have collected 198, I think, uh, book reviewers, 194 book reviewers who take my genre. And this is just googly. Uh, googly. Wow. Mm. I just googled these folks and I just pulled up lists of bloggers who review books and started adding them to this list. And I checked to see if they were accepting requests right now. I, I didn't make notes on some of the earlier ones and I really should have, but right here you can see I sent one. I've actually sent two. And I've made myself little notes about who's accepting what, whether or not they prefer physical books, uh, whether or not they're bookstagrammers or booktubers. And you could create a document like this for yourself. I'm happy to share this. Again, it's up in the resources chat, so that's available for anybody who wants it. Uh, I don't mind because it's not, you know, we're not competing. This is explicitly people who do urban fantasy most of these folks also will do high fantasy, a number of them will do sci-fi. So there's a fair amount of crossover. Um, you can't really lose... Okay, so uh, you can't really have straight up anonymity uh, in so much as you can use a pen name, like Heather uses one, uh, and you don't need to tell people who you are. They don't need to know your name. Um, they don't necessarily need to know your face. So yeah, and some, some locations in the world may require that. Like I know Anagram, you're in Germany and they require that. You don't have a choice. So your, your local national laws will determine some of that for you. Uh, I believe you're a squirrel that tracks. It's on brand for you. But you can... So you don't need to use your real name. You can create your author pages and everything under a pen name, like Heather suggested. It's a really common thing, and you don't need to tell anybody any sp explicitly personal information, like me telling people that I like to use swords and do historical reenactment is hardly a surprise for most folks and also it's not personally identifying because there are a lot of folks who like to use swords and there's a lot of historical reenactors out there there's thousands of us and me talking about writing there are a lot of skadian reenactors who write that's a thing so there's a whole lot of ways that i can let out my branding without giving out my personal information. For example, I go by E. Probilski pretty much everywhere. That's not my full legal name. I mean, you could, you might be able to find me, but there are a lot of E. Probilskis in the world. Uh, where my husband comes from, because he comes from another state entirely, almost a thousand miles away, he... There are so many Probilskis there, you can't throw a rock without hitting one, so going by E. Probilski is not particularly personally revealing. Right, so the social media, you can have it under whatever name you want. Just make sure it's consistent. So all of my social media, uh, my TikTok, my Twitter, my Instagram, my Facebook page, my, uh, like pretty much everything I can, I go by E. Probilski and my handles at E.H. Probilski on all of them. So if you, if you can keep it consistent across all of those platforms, you'll be doing yourself a favor because they'll know how to find you. Pretty easy. Uh, so 
And also, you can... Most of them can recognize me because I use this adorable little doodle that Mel did of me. That I have as my... Uh, as my icon everywhere. It's that. And it's on our publishing page. So coming up with something like that for branding, or it does so it doesn't have to be a photo of you. You can do whatever you want. So that is it, right, it's so there are definitely ways to, to go about that. So continuing on, there are some other resources I want to share with you, and we're at about the halfway mark. So we've got this this list of book reviewers. If you are not writing in a genre where this list is going to be helpful to you, you are probably going to want to start assembling your own list of book reviewers. And while that is annoying drudge work and can take a long time, like I had like 40 when I started a couple days ago. I think I got up to, yeah, I got up to bookworming thoughts here, 41. And because I found a, a, a list online and I did a bunch of research. And then a couple days ago, I spent literally 12 hours checking all of these websites, making sure they were open, finding their submission guidelines, making sure that what I wrote fit in with the submission guidelines and all of that stuff. So there's a lot that went into this. And it may be really, it, this was brain-numbingly drudge work. It was just not fun. But it wasn't scary. It was just, ugh. Um, however, it did leave me with a very useful tool that I'm going to be able to pull on later when my book is ready to be launched. And it is never too early for you to put something like this together. You don't have to have a finished book for this. If you know what genre you're writing in, you can look for reviewers who review that genre and start putting down their names on a list like this. It could be a podcast. Um, I'm going to be putting together a list like this of podcasts and vloggers that I would like to see if I can do an exchange on or do interviews with or do, as you can see, there's a column right here for guest blogging. That kind of thing and putting together a master list like this for yourself can be really useful. And it's not scary, it's just tiring and time-consuming, but it is part of the work. And doesn't require you to have a book out. So this kind of thing is really important. Then there are specific tools. So I'm going to see if I can pull up my face, uh, my, uh, whoops, that's the wrong button. I'm going to start sharing my monitor over here on the left. Um, and here are going to be some tools that you can Put together i'm actually thinking of doing starting to do book reviews lead on my website so that is a thing that i'm willing to consider doing all right so over on the stream if you take a look uh, i've got some tools up so we're going to start with mailchimp this is a free service up to a certain point and the point at which you need to start paying for it is like 2,000 subscribers, and if you have 2,000 subscribers to your email list and you're marketing that well and people want that much, it shouldn't be too much of a big deal to start paying for this. But what MailChimp is, is it is a newsletter creator. Oh, that has a problem. It didn't like me for a second. Um, well, okay, fine. You can create these emails. Let me log out and into a different, uh, I, I can show you. This is my churches, um, I'm doing on there, so, ugh, fine, send me the email. Hold on, guys. Ugh. Of course, when I try and log in, it's going to be like, nah, ah, ah, I don't trust you. You're not who you say you are, despite the fact that you were logged in five minutes ago. That was not the right thing. Thank you. Okay. So this is my church's website, or, or uh, MailChimp. And as you can see, we've got 60 contacts in here. And I've created some email templates. We're going to take a look at one of these. So my church does a weekly newsletter to everybody. And shows... It does the... Uh, 
to do our prayer requests and other things. I do a, a picture every week. And you can set it up to look however you want. So I created this graphic to go in there. This is the church logo up here. And so we have the announcements. I can pull up a previous one that we actually sent to show folks what an individual campaign looks like. So this was last week's service. So here's the, the newsletter in action. So we have the, the logo, the top of the newsletter. We've got the Bible verse that I made images for. Here are our church annou announcements and prayer requests. Then we have links to the order of service, song lyrics, and so on for our online folks who like to watch the stream. So this is, you can create emails through this by just dragging and dropping. It's really easy. And it allows you to collect email addresses and create a subscriber list, which is really important. And as an author, this is going to be something that will make a big difference for you. So there's that. Then there's Hootsuite, which right here, I think I've talked about it to you guys before, but it lets you set up your social media accounts on here. I, it, I don't really use this part of it because it, it's too chaotic for me, but what I do use it for is I use it to schedule posts. So for example, every week my blog goes live at 8 a.m. And I tend to, I'm never awake at 8 a.m., to be clear, 8 a.m. my time. I, I don't, mm, I'm never awake then. But I have my posts scheduled so that on my Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn, every week, it posts a post from me with a little bit of chatting, a link to the blog, a picture that I make in the next tool I'm going to show you, and the hashtags that I'm using on that platform and so it's it's the same across all of them except twitter i craft the twitter message carefully because twitter of course has the character limit where the others don't have so much but what hootsuite has that is going to be really useful to you is the analytics so this is my analytics dashboard for some reason it doesn't like linkedin right now i don't know i'm gonna set that on fire later but it lets me see how many followers I've gained in the period that I'm looking at. So I have the 30-day period, so we're looking at the last 30 days of my account. I have gained 26 followers in the last 30 days. I haven't really been aggressive. I've been really quiet. Um, I gained one fan on Facebook. I gained two followers on Instagram. Again, I haven't been really active, but it lets me know what's going on. It shows how many posts I've put out whether or not it was the same number or less from the last period. Tweets, I've obviously been tweeting more frequently and it shows what days I was more active on. But that stuff is interesting, but you, re you really want to get down here to, uh, to really see is engagements. Engagements is really the important thing. So as you can see here, in the last 30 days, my engagements on Twitter have gone up 285 from my usual 11 previously. That's That shows that I've been doing a lot of work. My uh, Instagram engagements have been going up. My Facebook en uh, engagements have gone up a little bit. But Facebook isn't really where I've been targeting a lot of my attention, so that isn't a surprise. But I can see all of these metrics in Hootsuite, which lets me get a handle on what posts are working, what aren't, uh, whether I've done well that month or not. Uh, obviously, this month on Twitter, I've been, bless you, the uh, the work I've been doing is really coming out. You know, I've, I've really taken off on Twitter and Instagram I'm doing really well on. This also, uh, how many people have clicked on your post? Well, more people have clicked on my post there. Um, it shows inbound messages. The sent, I haven't really figured out all of these. Well, that's not too bad, Anagram. I mean, if you haven't been po you haven't been really active on there. Like, I don't see you post much. Or, so that's you know you have to post to get attention. Um, so that's a that's a thing to be aware of. I don't 
Uh, so with the that so I keep forgetting to right there. You, that that statement of I keep forgetting to post on Twitter is why I use Hootsuite. This allows me to schedule out posts any time of day I want on my social media platforms, so I don't need to be at my computer to do that thing. So you don't know what to post. Well, that is going to be a function of what is your brand. Post things that relate to your brand. So I post about D&D pretty often. Um, as you all know by now, I have my Pathfinder game, my D&D game, starting in about 20 minutes. I talk about that on Twitter a lot. I talk about writing and I really spend time engaging with the writing community on there. Uh, so what you what to post, that is definitely a an area of concern, but that's going to be... No, Hootsuite does not, is not expensive. You do not need to pay for this. I am using the free version. Hootsuite is absolutely free unless you want some of their really high-end, expensive stuff that you don't actually need. You can schedule posts across, I think, about 50 different... Uh, oh, you can only find the demo? Uh, well, there's a free version. I, I promise you, Hootsuite is free. Uh, I can see if I can post a link to that and find it for you, and I'll put it up in the resources channel. But there's one last thing that I want to show you folks that is a relatively new... Uh, tool that I have found really helpful and quite powerful and it, the paid version for what an author would need is not very expensive at all. The free version, however, will work just fine for the most part. So this is a, yeah, there you go. They, they like to hide it because they want you to pay, but the free version works great and you can just use it and you can link it to all your social media accounts. So if you they, they'll advertise forever, but that's okay. Mm, that's not what I wanted. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can figure out where all my... My integrations are. Uh, there, manage accounts and teams. Does what ha It does not have Discord, but Discord is not considered a social media network. However, if you look here, you can see that I have it set up with my Facebook page. I That's my personal Facebook. We have my Twitter account. That's my author Facebook page, my author Instagram, my YouTube channel, which I haven't really gotten going yet, but I will be. Um, my Pinterest, which again, I don't use a lot, but is a thing that uh is is a tool i have and my linkedin and you can put all there you can add like 50 accounts for free so you're going to have access to a whole lot of power for virtually nothing and you can schedule your posts in advance and it will actually one of the things that i have found it, that's actually really neat is Right here, recommended 3 p.m. What? Oh, there's another one on Friday. Uh, it's after you start using it enough, and once you start interacting with Twitter enough, it'll start analyzing your posts and say, you should put a post out at these times in order to get the most engagement. So you can see I have a post at 3 p.m. saying, hey, did you catch my blog this week? Uh, this is this is for next week. This blog hasn't come out, but reposting the picture I made, which is the next tool I'm going to talk to you about, a link, and mentioning it. And it looks like 6 p.m. has another time that I should publish. And that would be a total of three tweets about my blog all week, trying to draw people to it. And so there's another one on Friday. That's when I post my second blog. And it says recommended 8 a.m. because that's when I post my Fallen Friday blog, which is my personal writing stuff. So this right here is a really powerful tool. And this comes with the free version, by the way. I'm not paying for Hootsuite. So it telling you, hey, you should try posting these times is free. 
but it will only figure these out once it starts analyzing your social media activity. And that is something that you want to consider, like, I, my E.H. Prabelsky account on Twitter is explicitly a business account. If somebody wants to track that and use the analytics on it and get invasive about the data, that's fine. It's not my personal life that's going up on there. So, um, it will anagram. Uh, it just, sometimes it's, it's glitchy. Sometimes it's a bastard. Try emptying your, uh, cash and trying again. It may just be being a jerk at that moment. Sometimes it's a little persnickety. Yeah, see, sometimes it's, sometimes it's a bastard, but it does work. Uh, so right here you can, so this is a really useful tool for you so that you don't need to sit at your computer engaging in social media all day. And one thing that I like to do is I choose which platform I'm going to do it on. And I specifically have been targeting Twitter because Twitter is where I have been most successful. And that's where my target audience hangs out. And I take 20 minutes a day. I actually set a timer. And I spend 20 minutes straight networking on that social media platform. I'm going to be starting to do that with Instagram some, but I started with Twitter. And as you saw in my analytics, it's been working really well. You know, going back to my my Twitter interactions, it's it, up 285 from 11. And that is, that's pretty big. Also, this, you can export it to a PDF or a PowerPoint, I guess, if you want to, if you hate yourself, but um, you can export this data so you can compare it between months and you can use it to uh, take a look and see what, what is working and what isn't. And that's a really helpful tool and it doesn't have to cost anything. So finally, getting to the thing that I've been nodding to for the last 10 minutes, we have Canva. Canva C-A-N-V-A also has a standalone app that you can use, which I have on my computer, but right now I'm showing you my, uh, my screen here. Uh, Canva allows me to create designs. The free version is a little bit limited compared to the paid version, but it is not so limited that you feel as though you can't use it. And one of the things that Canva is powerful for is creating these quotes that every time I publish a blog every week, I publish a quote from it. And there are a bunch of templates. You don't need to be an artist or a designer. If you are an artist or designer, you can come up with some really useful things. Um, yeah, book brush is available too. Um, but that does cost money. Book brush is a subscription thing. There is no free version that I know of Canva. It has free tools. There is a free version. That's cool. Um, so book brush is another option. Canva's not too difficult. Um, and I'm not going to, you know, if, if somebody can't figure it out, that's okay. So say I want to design a social media post. I like to design all of my social media posts as Twitter. Not, not, sorry. Come back. No, everything I'm doing is wrong as Instagram posts. Because Instagram has the requirement that it has a one-to-one one -one ratio. It has to be a square. Whereas other uh, social media doesn't. Well, wait lead, wait. Uh, using this kind of thing. So here's a template. I like this template. Sure, we'll use this one. It's all drag and drop for people who are not artistically inclined. So you can set these up however you want. You can add text. There's the background. You can add elements to it. So I have the pro version, so that means that I can add things you cannot. Um, I could add music to it if I wanted to turn it into a little video. Uh, that's, that's a pro thing. But you can make these images. You can also upload things. You can see here that I have a bunch of images that I've uploaded. I, I don't know why I would want that, but I can put that in the background if I so choose. Change the size, whatever I want to do with it. It's in a frame. Uh, I could put my previous cover on something if I wanted to. But you can use this to make promotional images. And the base version is free, and all of these images I uploaded before 
doing the paid version. You can see I, I made a background like in three seconds. So there's a lot of ways you can use Canva and it's not, it is free. Yeah, you can use Canva to make covers. Uh, Canva actually does have a pretty nice book cover template option. Um, well, I don't know. An Anagram, that's probably because you have not used Hootsuite. You just made the account. It doesn't have any analytics for you yet. Uh, mine has analytics in it because I've been using it for months. So right now it's... Okay, well, it shows me my analytics. So, And I'm not paying for this. You can see upgrade. It wants me to... It wants me to pay it, so I don't, I don't know. It keeps telling me to, but I, I've got the free version, and maybe it's different in Germany. Uh, so I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, even if you can't see the analytics in Hoot, in a Hootsuite, though, you can see the analytics in Twitter. So, really, huh? Maybe it's different in Germany than it is here. I, I, that's something I don't know about. Um, but I've had this account for years and it's never cost me anything. Uh, but so back to, back to Canva, you can use it to make whatever you want. You can use pictures you found around the net. You can use templates. They have a whole bunch of them. Some of them are, see how it says pro. Uh, I can use that one because I'm pro, haha, -ha. I'm sp but I'm spending money on this. That said, though, if you put something together and you don't have the pro account and you want to download it, it's going to be a dollar. So it's not excessively expensive to use. Um, it's not excessively expensive to use, and it's not going to be a problem to, to use the free stuff. I did it for a long time. I literally just got the pro version like two days ago. And one of the neat things about the pro version too is I can make video with it or make GIFs and I can download the animated GIFs, which is really nice. But finally, there is another option in here that the paid version has that I really like. Uh, let me go to... I'm fighting with some of the integrations right now. I'm actually talking to their tech support. We're trying to figure out what's going on. But one of the things I can do from here, say I want to take this Maya Angelou quote and share it, I have the option to share it to my social media page or Facebook groups if I want to. And I can schedule this post if I want to. Now, unlike Hootsuite, I don't think this has the analytics. So it won't show me how things are doing. If I want to see analytics for something, uh, really? Really? No, I don't need to sign up with anything. Can I just log in, please? Oh my gosh. Please sign in. Ugh. Thank you. Oh, it's white. But one thing, you, if you uh, if you have Twitter here, you can click on more, and analytics is available in Twitter itself. So I can use Twitter's analytics. Um, this is a twenty-eight day summary. I have tweeted eighty-eight less times. Because I've been busy. So there have been slightly few impressions right here. This big number that sounds like really impressive. Like 23,000 people. Holy crap. Um, that's just the number of people who have scrolled past your tweets. That doesn't necessarily mean that these people have interacted with it at all. Uh, profile visits. That's the number of people who've like, hey, who is this person? And clicked on my profile. Mentions and followers. I've gained 28. You can, so this is, I can scroll through here and say, oh, but when is my top tweet in the last month? Well, it's this one, top mention. So that's, you can use the analytics on social media websites. Uh, Facebook also has them. Congratulations, you get to see my personal life. Uh, 
for all of three seconds. So in here, somewhere, insights on your Facebook page. I can take a look at how many people have viewed my page and so on. As you can see, my Facebook page does not have a whole lot of activity on it because my Facebook is not where I'm doing most of my activities. And also Instagram, uh, if I want to get into my Instagram insights, you can see right here the Instagram insights shows what I'm doing, what I'm not doing. Now, I'm not really doing a whole lot of activity on Instagram right now, so I'm not surprised, but also this does a neat thing and breaks it up by who's following you and how many people are interacting with you. It looks like I'm pretty much appealing to the same folks across the board on Instagram, whereas on Facebook, I am overwhelmingly uh, being interacted with by women. But those kinds of things, that kind of anal analytics is useful once you've started your journey in marketing, but that's, that's, it can be a lot and analytics can be overwhelming and terrifying. And also part of the problem is I don't always know what to do with all that data. Once I've got a better handle on it, I can definitely talk a little bit more about it, but knowing who is clicking on things and so on is useful. Yeah, exactly. I'm not a numbers person. I am dyscalculic. Numbers terrify me and confuse me and anger me most of the time. So that's really kind of what's going on. But the these tools, Hootsuite, Canva, and MailChimp are really going to be important to you. The, the author marketing checklist that I shared is this, using those tools right here, you can do all of these things and it doesn't need to be hard. So if it seems like, oh my gosh, I don't know where to start. There's so much. Start with the checklist right here. Just start with this. Do these things up at the top. If you haven't done them already, do these things every week. Schedule some social media posts so you don't need to think about doing them all the time. Anagram so you don't forget. And you can do you can do pretty much everything here in about 20 minutes on uh, on any given day. So just choose a day of the week, spend about 20 minutes doing these things up here. It could honestly take you less than 20 minutes as you get good at it. Yeah, exactly, Anagram. Um, and honestly, I think there's a way to get... Like, I, I'm not sure if it's because it's German or not, but there are also other platforms that do similar things to Hootsuite. You might be able to find something that's uh, free and more user-friendly. But another thing you can do is you can actually schedule your social media posts in Twitter and Facebook and, and Instagram and so on. Like, you can schedule them in advance in each of those platforms yourself. And that doesn't cost money. So if Hootsuite isn't available to you because of the country you're in or for whatever reason, you can schedule tweets in advance. If you don't know how to do that, let's open up my Twitter again. I had it set to dark mode. Now it's at bright mode and that upsets me a lot. Uh, you click tweet and down here you will see a little calendar with a clock. It says schedule. You click that. You say when you want it to go out. Confirm and then you schedule the tweet. So that is how you do it. Yep, Facebook business does, yeah, Facebook, Instagram, it is the business dashboard in your Facebook page. You can schedule it there too. So even if you can't get Hootsuite for whatever reason, you still can schedule posts. You can still see analytics. It is just less convenient than having it all in one place, but you absolutely can schedule and create those posts just the same way. You don't need to be on your social media all the time. So if you're one of those people who's like, I'm going to forget to post at all, and I know myself, I'm going to, then schedule it. And that's okay. Go for it. 
using Canva can, you can make book covers on here. You can make quote designs like I have for all of my weekly quotes. I'm actually working on, one of the nice things about the paid version is I have a brand kit now. And I've decided what colors I want to be associated with my brand. I have a, my logo uploaded, the fonts that I'm associating with my brand, so that when I'm making a quote thing, I can use those fonts if I want to. And so I can start putting together this palette of colors that I want to use. And you can expand it or, you know, make it smaller, whatever. And with the paid version, I have multiple brand palettes. Like, this is my palette for Insomnia Publishing proper because it sort of matches the sheep and the stars. I may actually add a yellow in there. But so you can create these brand kits so that you can use them later, which is really helpful uh, if you're looking for visual continuity across platforms or like I'm going to be using these colors. I use them in my website. Um, except for that one, which I haven't figured out how to change yet, but I'm using those colors in my website and all of these header images now that I've got Canva Pro I'm going to start using making making header images for each of my blog posts that match this color scheme so they all fit which is something that's going to make me happy so doing things like that is really nice but it's not a hundred percent necessary and you don't have to do that to be successful what you need to do to be successful is the stuff on this page the stuff in this marketing checklist is the stuff you have to be successful at. You know, you have to have these things done. Those need to be done. These things you need to do every week. Now, you don't need to write a blog post every week. I do twice a week. It can be a lot because each blog post takes me about an hour to write and edit. But if you wanted to blog once a month, that's okay. That's why it's down here with the choose three of these things to do every week. And it doesn't need to be the same three. So reach out to five book reviewers and see if they're interested in a copy. Or joining Facebook groups. That's pretty painless. You don't need to... And also a lot of Facebook groups will let you join as your author page. Uh, that So that is a thing that is available. For those who are worried about their identity. Uh, if you don't have Facebook, that's okay. There are other places you can join groups. Um, you can also join things on LinkedIn. You can answer questions on Quora. Q-U-O-R-A. Uh, you could do things on Reddit. But, so there's an endless number of things you can come up with. These these were just ideas that I put together. Also, posting about your book on your personal social media, not just your author's social media, to let your friends and family know about it sometimes is good. Obviously, you don't want to overwhelm your friends and family with buy my book, buy my book, buy my book, buy my book! Have you bought my book yet? Buy my book! Don't, don't do that to them. They will get mad. And rightfully so. But mention it to them. Unless it is something that you really don't want your friends and family to know you have written. If, for whatever reason, you really don't want your friend- like, if I wrote hardcore erotica, I really wouldn't want to tell a lot of my friends about it. Because a lot of my friends would be like, wow. That's awful. And I'm talking like the little old church ladies, like I think I would scare them into, you know, unfriending me and probably kicking me out of the church but so if you it's if you're comfortable with it like but let your friends and family know about your book even if you don't do it on social media like tell your friends about your book so they can buy it because the reality is if nobody knows that you have made a book you're not going to be able to sell it that's really the ultimate reality here is if nobody knows that you've written a book you're not going to be able to sell it because nobody will be able to buy it because nobody will know it exists. And that is really what all of the, these tips and tricks and stuff that I'm talking about, all these tools are about. Um, side note, by the way, I see angels in the chat. She finished my cover design and I'm going to show it to you fine folks because I'm showing it off to everybody that isn't public. And I'm super excited about it. She has done an incredible job. So that is the amazing and freaking gorgeous cover that Angel put together for me. So thank you so much. She does awesome work, as you can obviously tell. 
and her prices are really, really reasonable. So definitely contact her about cover design if this if this is your jam. She's uh, I can't say nice enough things about her. So um, it is after seven. It is time for me to go eat Chinese food and make my players fight dragons. <laughs> so it's uh, time for me to pumpkinate. Uh, does anybody have any questions before we leave real quick? Because I know I kind of went through a lot of information and gave you guys a lot of tools. Um, you absolutely can tweet about random lore instead of writing a Cimmerillion, but I would think that would be a better blog uh, effort because blogs are long form, so you could actually get into it, whereas writing it all on Twitter seems like it would not go particularly well. I don't know if you get a lot of engagement on there. So I would suggest making that a blog series for you. And instead of writing a Cimmerillion, you can just do it that way. Yeah, if you have a blog, that might be a fantastic use of it. Another example of bad JK Rowling. What what bad JK Rowling? What what did what did we do? Um, taking first steps on Twitter. Uh, well, if you make a Twitter account, let everybody here know so we can all follow you. Yeah. Um, so let folks here know so we can follow you and interact with you. Uh, choose some hashtags to interact with. So one of the hashtags that I hang out on a lot is a hashtag called writing community. I am in there all the time, answering questions, chatting with authors. You know, I will, if they release a book and it's not like a horrible buy my book promo thing, I'll say, hey, congratulations. I'll tell people their cover art looks great. Just casual interactions with folks. And that is, <laughs> yeah. Um, that is a fantastic way of getting some engagement with people. It takes a little bit of practice. Um, yeah, that, that definitely could work, Heather. Like, that could be a lot of fun. Um, I don't really do that so much, but it, it may be really successful for other people. I tend to be more giving out writing advice, but that's what I do. Yeah, incorrect quotes. Uh, if anybody does fan art for you, you could tweet it and attribute it properly, so long as you have the permissions to. Um, lead, I have definitely noticed that you mostly share art. Uh, make sure you use hashtags effectively, too, on Twitter and Instagram. It'll help people find you. Uh, that's an entire talk in and of itself that I don't have time for, but definitely... Um, oh, yeah. Don't get rid of it if people have it. Um, so, that kind of thing, like... If you're gonna be getting started on Twitter, so I would say think about the hashtags you want to interact with. Because if you're trying to interact with all of Twitter, you're interacting with none of Twitter. So choose which communities you want to hang out in and get to know them. And all you have to do is just scroll through Twitter and see what people are posting and what hashtag and interact with it. Like it, retweet it, comment on it. It doesn't need to be a big deal. It just make sure that whatever you're interacting with, what you're saying, what you're liking is going to further your brand. Because if what you're saying and what you're interacting with is not going to further your brand, don't do it. Like getting into really heavy political arguments on Twitter as a public figure is probably not a smart decision. Because no matter what you say, it's going to be wrong to a lot of people. So that is, for example, something you want to avoid on, on Twitter. Because Twitter has a reputation for being a cesspool of sin, suffering, and horribleness. Um, yes, being silent can get you too, but for example, I don't hang out in the political part of Twitter sphere. I hang out exclusively in the writing community, so I don't really get involved in anything more controversial than whether or not you should self-publish or trad publish. So, like, if you're involved in a conversation, you don't need to, you know, bone out, but you could definitely decide which conversations you want to get involved in. And so that is 
a thing. And yes, saying things can get you in trouble, not saying things can get you in trouble, but you're not going to be able to please everybody all the time. And if your book has something controversial in it, you know, don't necessarily stay silent on that. But most of us, I think, in here are not writing ex extremely controversial subjects. Right, if you want to talk about the monarchy of the naked mole rats, I don't, I don't think that's going to uh, cause too much trouble. So think, definitely think about what you're wanting to use the social media outlet for before you do it. That's the thing that I see most authors stumble into and just faceplant is they start treating their public-facing social media like their private social media, and they don't have a good differentiation between the two, and then they end up in trouble because they will turn people off by being hyper-political sometimes, or will start fighting with people. Like, I don't fight on Twitter. I will tell people if I think they're doing something wrong, but usually that's a rare case. I, so I don't fight on Twitter. I've got better things to do, and I'm certainly not going to fight on my author Twitter because I don't want that kind of brand. So being contentious on there, that's not part of what I want people to see me as, so I don't do it. Um, okay, so I think that's about all I've got time for. I need to go eat food, and I will talk to you folks later, and it was a great meeting this week. I hope that I was able to help folks get some tools that you can use and some ideas of how to use some of the social media and how to do some of the marketing. Uh, remember Canva Hootsuite if it's available in your country. If it's not, you can schedule posts. And uh, MailChimp are going to be your friends. And definitely check out that document that I have of things you should do. Have a great night, and I'm going to go make my players fight dragons.